All right, everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and there's been an update. I like to bring everything to a close, and there's been an update with the Gambala Mirage GT that crashed in New York City. You'll remember that was uh, probably about a year ago, and driver Ben Chen crashed famously in Manhattan, uh, went all over the news because it was a pretty much a million-dollar car that not only crashed, he then left the scene with three wheels on his car, started smashing into other cars, drove a couple other blocks, and then got arrested at the scene. Now, you'd expect a guy like that to go out, get some lawyers, get the charges dropped, dismissed. They were actually just thrown out, right? And this, this is going to be, I mean, there's no excuse for this. Uh, there's going to be backlash, obviously, as far as outrage, that the rich people are able to just get away with anything. And that's one of those things that came true here because this isn't the guy went to court and he beat it. This is the district attorney or whoever was prosecuting the case just flat out dismissed the charges. He had a charge of reckless driving, which driving your car that you just crashed a couple of blocks through red lights uh, and smashing into five other parked cars while on drugs. Uh, no matter what, that's not a hard charge to prove. You've got closed circuit television. You've got the videos that people posted online. That is not difficult. <laughs> What is wrong with this dude? Then you also have the drug charge, which any lawyer would come in and start talking about the calibration of the equipment. When was the last time that was calibrated? You're going to have to throw those results out. Do you have any other results? No? Okay, well then that's it. And that's what lawyers do. That's how they get uh, DUIs dropped and other stuff like that. But this one is special because usually that'll go to trial and you can try to defeat it at trial. This one had the charges dismissed based on the fact that the, uh, whoever the state said that they didn't feel that they had su sufficient evidence to prove the charges beyond a reasonable doubt. I would like to see that one go to trial, right? Like, is it just in the interest of justice? I mean, you lose all confidence in the legal system when you have stuff like this happen, when cops get prosecuted and get off of stuff, uh, or when rich people, like, if it was anyone else, they'd be in jail. They wouldn't have even been able to make bail to be out of jail, and they would serve however long. Nobody was hurt in this one, uh, but the, the video evidence of even the cop walking up and, and seeing that this guy was zonked out of his mind was, and that's not a, a, a blood test or a urine test, but that's still... This is, I don't know, this, this annoys me too. Like, and like, I'm all for like the guy paying his fine and, and doing what he's got to do and, and going six months probation, whatever, like a light sentence. That's one thing. To have the charges dismissed with all the abundance of evidence in on 11th Avenue or whatever, yeah, 11th, 11th Avenue in Manhattan, three blocks away from Times Square, you're talking about smashing a million dollar car with every business for seven blocks, shooting video cameras, You've got traffic light cameras, you've got cops on the street, you've got all these eyewitnesses, you've got this, this absolute crazy story. To just have the charges dismissed is a little bit of bullshit. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it didn't even go to trial and like the pricey lawyer does his song and dance and is like, prove it was him. Could have been his brother, cousin, somebody else looked like him. Did you get his ID on the spot? Did you fingerprint him? No, you didn't fingerprint him for three hours. Maybe they switched position. That's cool. But to go in there with all the evidence that even I have, I don't even, like, I wasn't even there, but I have enough evidence to prosecute that case, I would have at least liked to see that go to trial. I, I think that is a put, and everybody's entitled to their day in trial. And this isn't like a, 
multi-vehicle thing where it's like this guy said this and this guy said this, but there were no cameras and no this and no that. So we have no evidence of any of this. So the details are a little bit fuzzy. The dude was driving the car to the owned. He was sitting in the driver's seat when the cops walked up to him. There's video of all of this. And somehow the state felt like they didn't have enough evidence to prosecute. So I don't know, uh, leave your outrage. I don't even know who to complain to. Maybe if the, uh, the video picks up enough steam and gets enough play that the state or the mayor or somebody will have to respond to it. But it does seem a little bit uh, ridiculous. Uh, it does seem a little bit unfair. And that is life, unfortunately. And, and that's, the, the, with the prosecution of people of like, especially like police officers now, with prosecution of police officers for doing stuff that like, well, it was in the moment. These guys aren't on drugs. They're drawing their weapon in a dangerous situation. Those guys are being so incredibly scrutinized for every single moment. Oh, on your body camera, in that second where he reached, reached into his pocket, you shot him 0.4 seconds later when he reached into his waistband and it was only a knife, it wasn't a gun. All of this doesn't translate into like, all right, well that, if I was in that situation, I totally would have just like had a conversation with him and, and then like, it's nonsense. Uh, I think that this is a very, very poor move by uh, whoever was prosecuting the case. It's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know what ended up happening with the car. It probably went back to uh, Gambala to get rebuilt. I think this is a this is a ugly, ugly move, uh, and it's a black eye on uh, the state and city of New York that this got to this point. Like, I, like again, they went to trial. The evidence was out there, laid out there. The prosecutor made their case to dismiss the charges, citing a lack of evidence. Sounds like somebody got very wealthy, and somebody else skated by again. So that's my opinion, and there's I, whatever when I get sued for this, whatever, uh, that is my opinion. I am stating the facts that I'm aware of at the time. Do I have all the evidence? Do I have the case? No, but from what I've seen, I think there's sufficient evidence to at least take it to trial and prove very basic charges. I mean, you're talking drugs, easy. It was either on drugs or not. There's a blood test, there's a urine test, whatever. Get whether it gets thrown out, but even the reckless driving charge. That's just a traffic offense. Now, it's a criminal traffic offense, but at least, I mean, the, the ba I've been charged with that, and, and I've done significantly less. Like, just, just driving on the highway, I've gotten reckless driving charges. Like, in, um, in certain states, it's like reckless over 20 miles an hour over the limit. So, it's ridiculous that this guy can do this and get away, and the state can't prove reckless driving or whether or not the dude was on drugs. Sounds like a pretty botched investigation or just somebody's somebody here you keep the car and let me go i don't know uh, i don't like it rob ferretti let me know your thoughts in the comments below but i'm sure we're in agreement on this one uh, i don't think anyone's like good for him yeah, yeah it's score one for the little guy uh, i'm not getting that vibe here see you tomorrow so you guys are familiar with my other company adventure drives right well we're going to be going to scotland in october we're going to be doing scotch distilleries playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.